Uh, coming up next is how to measure efficiency or productivity of an agile team by the Scrum Angler's ambassador. What's his name? Albert. 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 Yes. How do we measure productivity and efficiency today? And that's the cracks of it because that is something which I faced it and we changed it. Okay, how many are QA specialists here? Okay, developers. Wow. How many are actually project managers? <laughs> <laughs> Who actually evaluate people? Oh. How do we evaluate people today? How many bugs we log as a QA? How many bugs we log? Okay, if you log 100 bugs, this friend, yeah, you, you did a good job. Is that is productive? Okay. Uh, how many times you broke the build? Are you not efficient? Or at least less productive? These are the things which we take over till the end of the year and our appraisal gets screwed up. <laughs> we never get to that meeting expectation. Correct? So, going forward, okay. this is one thing which I just got in a Twitter some two, three days back. Management is to confuse measuring with acting, targets with performance, and planning with change. Okay, this is by Niels, who is the author of Organize for Complexity book. This is a very powerful tweet which he did that actually says what we are doing today. He always confused with measuring and acting. Now, a number of bugs is directly linked to your performance. That's an acting. Measuring is acting. So, keep this in mind, let's go to here. Productivity is directly proportionate to the number of hours you work. If you work for two hours, are you productive as per your manager? No. If you work for 10 hours, are you productive enough? Right? Is what the manager will say. Yeah, that's, I will come to that point actually. Uh, but if you work for 10 hours a day, are you productive for that day? <laughs> Not necessarily that we know by theory, but it depends on the context. Outcomes and outcomes. What is the outcome? A uh, lot of people, why they spend too much of time every day in art office? If not necessarily is the answer. Okay, not efficiency. Efficiency is the manager. Can I be little? Like, can you be a little bit louder? Yeah. Here there is no performance appraisal. So. <laughs> because the manager wants them to. Yes. Okay, so my point is productivity is proportionate <coughs> to number of hours work as per managers. But that's a myth which is not true. Next one, efficiency of a team member. How much time he took to complete the task? More time than the plan is less efficient. Less time than planned, more efficient. Yes. Is that is true? What about the guy who has done the planning? Was it his fault? Yes. No, that that never comes because the planning is done by the manager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's how we even today in many teams the leads, the, the subject matter experts of the scrum teams are doing, even today. Okay, this, we did it. And I was in the company, I, I did it. Okay, but that's not actually true. So what we do to avoid all these things? We add, what is the desire here? It's a hours, number of hours in every terms. Correct? What we did for a workaround, we add sponge in everywhere. If I think I will finish it in three hours, I will not tell three hours, I will tell four hours. My project manager adds another hour because there is a buffer and he needs it. Five hours. Now, 
when he tells outside, he will not tell five, he will tell six hours to the business. And the business will tell to the customer seven hours. A three hour task with four hour sponge. Why? Because we are afraid whether we will complete or not. What if we are not completing? What is the implications? As Avinan actually helped me to set the base during his talk. A lot of things which he told, your efficiency, your productivity, everything is managed individually. Right? So, this is a real graph which we did when we started that. Actual estimate just took four, three and a half sprints, but we buffered it to five sprints. <coughs> Actually, it took six sprints when we complete, but the buffered is nine sprints. This we did, okay, and the productivity was totally down. The reason is we are afraid, we are completely afraid to take that field because it is directly linked to my performance appraisal in the end of the year, not any. Okay, so is this, this is not the way that we need to proceed. So how many of you guys faced this situation? Only few. Wow. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah, you don't tell uh, that we face this situation can be far worse. Uh, if it was really bad, then you would work on weekends and Sundays, Saturdays, uh, and yeah, that's the that's the actual one, right? Here, our buffer plan actually is five, and it took six because weekends and everything came. I, for me, when I worked Fridays, I never went home at five o'clock. I went at 5 o'clock morning. <laughs> okay? That, that's how we stretch because the Friday is our day where we need to release something. Okay? Everything breaks that exact day. <laughs> that exact day. Till that day, it never breaks. But that day breaks. Okay? So, we stretch. That leads to too many defects. Why? We are not productive because after 8 hours our brain never works. It all tries to escape. So we do every loop. We don't <coughs> fix a bug, we pass it to finish the work. Correct? So that leads to too many problems. Right? So is that is the way to measure anybody in the team. So here is, this is one report which we show to our customers or our product management, they, we show only these two, <laughs> not this. <laughs> because for them, your actual and plan is same. They are happy. But what we went through is this week. Okay? <clears throat> so, these are the problems actually in traditional model. Individuals, we never be transparent. We always finger point. Because if I accept that, yes, we did this mistake, performance is affected. We always uh, defend ourselves. We don't uh, accept the mistake. Finger pointing, never ever ask help. We never, we try to Google, we try to do everything, but we never ask help to the next colleague who is sitting in right next to us. Why? He will think, I am not efficient. Correct? Never take the ownership because I don't do anything. I need to defend myself, right? So what happens to the team? This is individual problems. What happens to the team? No. All individuals, if they think like this, productivity goes down. Never comes up. Second is team moral because everyone don't trust anybody. That's the motto we go in. Moral will not be there. There is no collaboration. Okay. Then ownership, we don't take any ownership. This is, yeah, it happened and not by because of me. That's why QA, QA. They never did it. Or uh, these guys did not do a code review properly. We don't take ownership. Hiding an ant <laughs> until it becomes a <laughs> Okay, The bug will be there. <coughs> we know that when we are coding, the bug is there. We don't say that and fix it. We just keep it going. 
It also becomes a Newton Swift law. Bugs can either be created or be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly, that's the <laughs> you want to say that. Yes. yes. Okay. Because on the last day, I have an example for that. Uh, exactly three days before the release GA, we found a major bug, which is P1. Sorry, sorry P0. Crashing bug, that is. But the source was in some sprint 3 or something. And we were talking about Sprint 21. And the person who did is nothing but me. <laughs> okay. The thing is, we were afraid that time to say there is a bug that we need to fix it. We know that bug is there, but we don't tell it. No communication on the issues we face or they face. We don't communicate to others that hey, I am stuck here, I am stuck there. No, we don't. Hey, everything's okay. We will finish. We will finish. We will finish. We never do that. All because of the time which we desire. This is much is the time. But is the time is actually required? <coughs> is the time is actually required for our <coughs> development purposes? Because in Agile, if you see, nowhere you will see hours. Even they say task don't even measure. We don't plan our releases based on us, we don't calculate our velocity based on us, we don't plan our sprint based on us, ballpark estimate, excel, excel, <coughs> whatever it is, is also not based on us. Maybe there is an underlying number, but we don't use that. Correct? Not always. Not always, <coughs> but most of the times. People actually end up converting, acquiring them to numbers and yeah. miss you. Yeah. That's why I'm saying there is an underlying number maybe there, but we should not use it. That's the that's the underlying thing. Because if you look at as a scrum perspective, we deal with story points. How many stories we are doing it? What is the story point calculation? It says how much is the complexity and into by variable factors. How much uh, uncertainty you have? That's it. Correct. The complexity defines what is the story point. It never says I need 10 hours for one story point. So do we need that hours? Not really. So why are we measuring everything with us? So in my previous company, that company, the new VP who came introduced us to a new model, which is completely out of us, though we do everything with us, we don't calculate anything with us. What we calculate is very simple. Number of bugs in the system. Okay? The moment my number of bugs in the system, what did it thought? How many bugs left? Correct? Actually no. If you see the QA specialist, he should find as many bugs as possible before even the build starts. And if you see the developer, how many is avoided? He found it, he will not log it. He will tell the developer immediately, call the developer immediately, hey, we are finding some bugs. Check it. Okay? He will immediately fix it. <coughs> and we do all check another one. How much is critical on that? It is not just the bug which we log or which we say. How critical that bug is. Suppose, uh, for example, a text box should contain only 250 characters. Can be disaster or cannot be disaster. It depends how critical that work is. That matters. And all this happens before even the build. So when the build is coming out, we had a KRA. As a punishment, KRA that says no blocking issues should be there. If you are having a blocking issue after the build, means QA did not test it properly. Dev did not fix it properly. Why? Because there is no collaboration. Why there is no collaboration? The total team need to give answers why that bug escaped to the build. <coughs> Not the individuals. The team need to give. Jay, you have any questions? No. Yeah, we had a similar experiment. I can share that later. Okay. Uh, so, that helped us to calculate this one. How we improved is our turnaround time to fix a bug during any time period. You take any time period for that matter. How improved we are? Are we decreasing or increasing? 
based on that the measurement based on that measurement we act upon this does not have any hours the question is about yes so you are tracking once that you form within the space cycle uh, or just most of the time the communication happens in form right so how do you actually do that that that's a nice question how we do is uh, normally we maintain a small excel sheet which is shared with everyone the moment it is updated there's an alert goes to everyone okay this is not in the system but this is a very informal way. okay uh, also uh, if i if i am sitting here okay i am developer qa is sitting say for example outside this room we call from this place we don't go we don't ping we don't use phones we call hey there is a bug the complete teams will take turn up right that is a way that of that ring fire bell ping 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 all those contacts okay but that is a good way to bring the collaboration within the team why face to face communication everyone knows there is a bug someone need to jump in no one can say hey this is albert's bug i don't i will not fix it because albert may be in another own bug okay so that's how we again the question is it. again do we really have to practice because we do enforce most of the testing to be happening in the dev environment itself yes. but then we don't track the number of bugs that they test because basically it's the developer tester sitting at one desk and testing but do we really have to track uh in some cases yes we need to track it the limit and the reason so for example there is a bug which may be a uh, suggestion based i can solve that bug based on suggestion that this need to work in this model only. now as a product company the knowledge management this is a knowledge which is shared by the team now goes to the customer support who don't know this product at all the level one support just takes it hey there is a bug okay contact this person if he has that information hey there is a bug okay this is a symptom is there is any knowledge based on that? i can give that immediately to the customer there's no turn around so for that purposes yes you need to track it not for pain okay that's what the the people i mean i also told that the people are the problems on that side that you need people who look the data in a correct way if you look at it in a wrong way number of bugs 100 bucks hey your product is having 100 bucks what kind of product it is that's a wrong way of looking at it hey you have 100 bucks so what is the way we are going to fix it that's a right way it's not been like it's actually looking the first time okay second one albert so how do you raise something like this if it's like you know the meta location team because you know let's say few people even the scrum team this is and this is in my group it is very much a scenario where few people are sitting here somebody is in there in chennai somebody is there in yeah. us kind of a difficult you use chapman no i'm just saying that because you know this is more like creating an awareness and being a proactive thing that okay let's go ahead and do it before it actually like becomes an elephant but in certain situation when the we have day and night time yeah so yeah uh, that that is that happens so what you can do is tie up tie up people okay so for example if it is a us team who is working is it possible to have a test here that so for example if there is three developers who is in us two developers in, uh, in chennai or bangalore is there any possibility where we can tie these two people or three people with one tester that or some tester supporting from here that is one way or see how much overlap we can have because if it is pst for example 9 o'clock here maybe 6 o'clock that is it possible for them to join come at 6 o'clock a meeting start a meeting that we both can be we can we can try that way. okay this is the phase interaction that matters not the issues is the interaction the moment interaction starts everything is solved okay the next one is test scenarios and use cases this is the place where we
miss lot of time. Test cases never shared with developers. Use cases never shared with testers. Though you are an agility. This is happening in many companies, not one company or two. In many companies. Though we are an agile team, we are silos. I am a developer. I am a tester. Why do I need to test what they will do? Because these are questions that even I asked. Okay. Uh, why not? Why not we test? In that company, what we did is, yes, it's a month sprint. It's a monthly sprint. We have four uh, build, major builds. So the third build is the feature complete. Most of the times. Fourth build is bug fixes and all those things. But this fourth build, all the developers are actually testers. <coughs> they sit and test the product. We cross cross test it. Say for example, I am developing one feature or one story. That story will not be tested by me. My colleague will, who is a developer, can test it. So this helps out to bring the quality for us. How it brings it? When I see a bug, how do I feel as a developer? Correct? So that knowledge is spread and they do get the first hand experience of the testers going, how irritated they are, or our customers, how they irritated. We used another own model for that, which is sustaining engineering. Any product has a maintenance team. In ours, we don't have it. There is no separate sustaining. What we did is, we take one person, for that particular sprint, he will be the sustaining engineer. So now he gets the customer issues directly directed to him. Now he knows how customers are feeling. Next time, a different member goes there, not the same person. This guy will come into the team and he spreads how much issues he faced there. That improves the quality. The people start looking at it because when you get the experience first hand, you will never forget. Someone slaps you, or hearing a story of someone slaps someone, that's it, right? <coughs> so the the way we do is how many are valuable <coughs> scenarios? Because always QA is measured how many test cases I wrote, right? No one cares about how many are valuable, how many are actually needed, right? So we cal we look at how many scenarios are actually valuable in the total and did you measure that? Yeah, how did you measure that? We sit as a team right now. We sit as a team. Uh, one person will just give it, hey, this is the testimony. Immediately there will be 10 people. Why that is needed? Immediately, next moment. So if all the weed outs, weeds will be removed in that review. Yes, we do spend some time on the uh, reviews and all those stuff, but then that gives the quality for us. How many, how many are critical that is found early in this moment, not in the late? How many are found early? That is one major critical factor which we do. Okay. Another one is dev. Because it's not just the QA's work. How many how much involvement that dev team actually showed on that? It can be a review, it can be developing new cases, it can be anything. How much they are collaborative to bring that test case or things. In that experiment, we what we had is we developers find 10 use cases, testers find <coughs> 10, uh, 15, documentation team finds 30. Now combinedly I have full use cases during sprint plan, not after. Any questions on this? These two slides. So you guys use this for your performance appraisal? Yes. I'll I'll come to that. That's the next slide we have it. Okay. <coughs> so that this is these two gives me this. How collaborative the team that. Now the moment as I told, the moment we are collaborative, we unearth a lot of things, we are very vocal because everyone is responsible for what we are doing. Sorry. The third one is defining the requirements. That is the most important thing in, in our total thing. If the requirement is not refined to the level where we can do it, it is of no use. We stretch our time. 
So how refined the requirement is? What is the contribution? It is not just the product owner's job to give requirements. It is not just because the product owner has another function which is facing the customer. He will not have. He is also like us. He does, but how much time he spends on both matters. So it is each and every individuals of the team to refine the requirement. If you find something different, ask. Don't assume. Okay, that is one thing, and that gives me how vocal the team is. That is another measurement. When a team is very vocal, you get issues every day. Stand up will not have a day without input. Okay. Then is this is developer mainly. Quality of the code. How good was the code? What are the improvements seen over the period? <coughs> okay. How good the code coverage using unit testing? What is the refactoring effort? How often we refactor? Six months once, three months once, or every day? These are some factors which we calculate. Okay. And to find out whether I am productive, productive enough and efficient. Enough. Because I cannot refactor the complete day. That's not efficient, right? If you are doing that, yes, you are not productive. But that refactor, how much valuable it is? That is also okay. Then is these are some reports which we used for our stakeholders. That is nothing but I planned some ten stories. Have I completed that much? If not, why? This why is asked during the retrospective, not as a separate meeting by the team, not by anyone. Okay. Second one is velocity improvement over the time period. Here, this is the killer. There is no constant velocity. There is no constant rule that you need to increase by 10 percentage every spend. No. What is the improvement? If there is a decrease, why that decrease happened? Is there is anything research happened to that? Those kind of questions will be asked by the team. These are create found during the retrospective, not manager or anybody comes in. By the team, for the team, not by anybody else. How collaborative and vocal in solving the problems and raising the issues. There are two differences. Solving problem is one, raising issue is another one. Right? You can everyone can solve it, but who is raising? How vocal are we in raising that issues? That brings the efficiency of the team and productivity of the team. When I start raising the issues, solution comes with it. Not very good. Okay. What is the value the team is bringing during the startup? Stand up. Uh, previously, we used to give it this way. What did I do yesterday, today, and what is it? Uh, yesterday, I worked on the bug. Uh, 17650 and I am working on it. Today I will finish it and I got no improvements. This is what we, we told. Is there any value in this? Yes. Zero. Zero. Zero value? Zero yeah? yeah. So the VP saw that. He said one thing Albert, I don't make sense in it on what you told. Okay, why should I come? Because you are not giving me any value. Why should I come? Tell me, how do, can you add value to it? Think the same thing for others. <coughs> so then I changed it this way. Yesterday, I worked on the bug which is related to a multi uh, text box, multiple line text box uh, which had Unicode characters. So I fixed that and today I will be taking uh, the spell checker issue. And I think it will take two hours. After that, I will look at the next bug, which which is there in the queue. Now, how valuable this is? Because they know what I am going to do, and where the issue is, what the issue is. Right? This may not have how I fixed it, but they know there is a problem that is fixed. If I just give the number, bug number, for example, does not help. Okay. That is the value. These are the 
some measures of productivity. So how do you measure a research based task? How do you measure a research based task? Okay. When I speak research based task, I see what is the research we are going to do. What is the end result we need to find out? Okay. How how much we reached there on that particular day? Okay. That's my 30 minutes. Okay. Just give me. Sorry. Uh, see, I I look at. Okay. I need to go to that end. Okay. Today, I take two steps. How far I am at? Based on that, we calculate. Hey, I have. I am working on this research. I am looking at the diagram. I am looking at the data structure. What I need to use, but I am stuck in this particular area. Today, I am going to spend some more time on this. If not, I need someone else. That is the time. That's the time. So we have to do the operation. Okay. That's a good. Actually, that's a good. We have mapped it. We have mapped it. Uh, what we do is. With this collective information, our appraisals are always team, not individuals. Fine. You said that the developers need to write code and knowledge. Yes, basically cases. Yes. And for the QA, it's for scenarios and how they share with the people. So a guy who is doing a research, so how do you define? How do we define? I mean, define in the sense that. Okay. Okay. What we do is our our performance appraisal is not yearly, sprint by sprint appraisals. How it is? You can try it in your office also. That the cost is very minimal, very minimal, not not as much. We have something called spot award. We have something called quarterly award. We have something called annual award. In the spot award, what we do is uh, we plotted a map which has multiple parameters. How many bugs are reported before the build? How many are valuable? How many are found or how many are raised even before starting the code? All those stuff is plotted. Gives weightages for everything. Then who gets more weightage? Take that, we explain what exactly we are doing. Everything is transparent. Uh, everything is transparent so Everyone knows how to do it. Since everyone is knowing how do I do it, how we appraise it, it motivates people to come into that group. It's not a like group, at the same time, it is motivation. We manage it in that. So, the spot of our person gets it immediately, easily. And there is another way which is called chocolate game, which we play. Maybe next, next topic is that. Or maybe you will have an open house after lunch. Yeah, I can do the uh, open house. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, guys? Any questions, please write them in your sticky notes. We'll park them. That's all for my talk today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Albert. At uh, Scrum Bangalore, we normally hate to see this uh, parking lot empty. Please play the uh, feedback game, I mean just simple game, right? What's good since morning, what's bad, where can we improvise in the afternoon sessions? We got two games, there's a slight change in the agenda. Right after lunch we'll have a short talk and after that we're going to play a couple of games. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. Alright, lunch is uh, served at our team rooms.